Hello everyone, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art. I am currently taking a much needed holiday in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where I am spending some time with friends and family, just a little recharge and reset before starting two murals. And then we are expecting our first child on May 1st. And we are so very excited, but we definitely needed a little bit of a break. But of course, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging without a weekly animal painting tutorial. And so I made this one relaxing, fun. This can be great for beginners. And we will be working on a six by six canvas making a husky. And like usual, I have all the materials and supplies you'll need in the description box below. And so guys, without further ado, let's get painting. First, we're going to start by sketching the dog. I've attached reference photos of huskies in the description box below. You are welcome to find your own, but just for confidential reasons, I don't have this specific dog's reference photo. Take your time at sketching out this husky. Huskies aren't particularly difficult to draw, but if you're new at drawing, this can be a bit of a challenge. So no rush, just take your time. Also, take this time to make your environment as tranquil as possible. This is supposed to be fun and relaxing, so light a candle, turn on some relaxing music, or get a grab a cushion, anything that'll make this therapeutic for you. So after you've gotten comfy, grab your favorite color that you want to put in the background of this painting. It can be any color, but the specific color that I used was Viridian. And what we're going to be doing is just mixing a little bit of white with the, ch the color of your choice. And that way we can just make sure we get a really pigmented color to cover the sides of the canvas and around the dog. Especially for the background, you always want to make a good amount so that um, you don't have to go back and remix the color. And the other tip is, is that's important to remember is we don't want to paint um, an outline around the dog. We want to get as close, almost, it's better to overlap that sketch that we made than have this white outline around the dog. So get as close as you can to the dog. It's okay to go over that sketch we're going to be painting over that with our fur and other colors. So go ahead and grab your fat flat brush once you've done that and make sure it's dampened and you can get painting on that background. Throughout this video we'll be making a lot of different tones of grays and it can be kind of confusing when I'm saying dark gray, medium gray, light gray. Lauren, what the heck is that? <laughs> so that is just going to take um, a lot of practice. This is just practicing learning how to mix those colors, uh, getting a feel for how much of each, you know, how much of black and how much of white to mix in. But for this step, we are starting with dark gray, which is just going to require a little bit more black than white. Black is extremely pigmented, so you be, you're going to be surprised by how little you need. Watch me and how I, I mix my colors. Sometimes it can be a little hard, I apologize, with my hand in the way. But just observe how I go about mixing these colors together. So we're going to start laying down the darkest tones of the Husky using our fat flat brush and that's dampened fat flat brush. I also call it a fat brush. <laughs> and so we're just going to go around the ears, we're going to go around the face. 
only laying paint where those dark tones belong. We're really not gonna focus on creating that fur-like texture. We're gonna do that in a little bit later steps, but right now we're just laying down the color. So just filling it in, not worrying if you go over the into the background, going over that sketch that we did. That's okay. Trying to find the darkest tones of the dog can be quite tricky, but it's better that you start with a darker tone at the very beginning and then just gradually layer it than starting with something that's just far too, too light. So now we're going to switch brushes to our detail brush and here's where we're going to work on placing the dark parts in the eyes and the nose and around the mouth. A lot of huskies have like almost what looks like eyeliner around their eyes, a really thick outline and so you'll see that I won't make this thin outline and I'll make it a, a bit thicker around both eyes.
And then of course, don't forget the mouth. For our next step, we will be mixing up a darker gray than the gray that we just made. So don't mean to confuse you. I know I keep saying dark grays and we'll be talking about medium grays and then light grays, but this is just going to be adding a bit more black than what we added previously. At first I was just going to place all the dark parts in this nose, but then as I went on, I realized, you know what, I'm just going to cover the whole nose. And then what we'll do and the steps and the next steps is just add on the lighter tones so you can use your detail brush or your medium or fat brush to paint the whole nose in and then we're going to go back later and um, layer the lighter tones Now, depending on which direction your Husky is looking, mine is looking just straight forward. Um, that's where you would place the pupil. So in this case, I'm painting from the top of the eye, leaving a little white, a little gap on the bottom. But sometimes your dog might be looking to the left, might be looking to the right. And so that's gonna change where you place that pupil. So we are moving on to fill in that white space um, on the Husky. And so we're going to create a light gray and then slowly build it up with the white. I'm using this color for quite a bit of the Husky, so make sure you make enough. We're going to be covering around the lower chest. We're going to be covering around the face and even the ears. You'll often see me using previous colors because I just feel bad wasting paint. And so don't be afraid to just grab uh, some of that dark tone from the darker grays that we made previously. So go ahead and grab your dampened fat brush and we're going to start painting. Starting with the face, I'm going to start working around those dark eyes, those outlined eyes that we did. And then I'm going to move around to where the light doesn't really hit around the chest. And then we're going to get, we're going to paint the ears. I say this quite often when I'm doing these painting tutorials. This, these first steps are just placement of color. We're not trying to make it perfect. We're not trying to create hair. We are just placing them in the right spots, layering them from darkest to light.
For our next step, we are gonna be making an even lighter gray. And I also, for this step, used the gray that we just combined in the previous step. And I just added more white. So add some more white. We're gonna be mixing a good amount again of that color because we're gonna fill in a lot more of that white space. Make sure you make enough of this color because we go in a little bit later and use this color to add to other colors that we mix together. Using a dampened medium brush, go ahead and fill in that white space on the nose that we didn't touch with the last color, on the top of the forehead, on the cheek, and the areas that I show you here. people in person how to paint a pet portrait I kind of notice people making shapes they'll make like squares or circles or rectangles when they're making these layers and there's nothing wrong with that because that's kind of like abstract art and if that's the look you want to go for that's fine but mostly I'm just kind of almost creating these little blobs if you want to call it that um, in the spaces where I see these different tones of color This step we're going to be making a medium gray and I really don't make very much that's why I'm not using my palette knife. I just use my paintbrush because we're just kind of connecting the dark tones to the lighter tones with a medium gray. Huskies have these cute little eyebrows and I tried to make that distinction by still leaving that dark gray around the side of the top eyebrow. And so we're just using that medium gray to kind of define that a little bit more. And then we're gonna go back in with our lighter gray, more like our white, and um, add the highlights later. So I am actually starting to make that fur-like texture. I'm not covering some areas up with my lighter gray. I'm still leaving some of that dark gray to shine through, but this a fat flat brush is really helpful in making fur because using the edge of the brush can create that line um, and so I will take my brush from side to side and that'll kind of help me create that texture.
Okay, moving on to the ears, we're going to create a grayish red, a grayish pink more like. And so we're going to be adding white, uh, our red, with a little bit of the grays that we previously used to create that darker pinkish tone for the ears. When I tested it, I decided that this was too dark. And so to lighten that up, I just added a little bit more white, just a smidge more pink, more red, and that's the color I, I liked. Mixing colors can be kind of difficult, and that's why I love acrylics, because I can just test the color and see if it looks right. And then if not, I can uh, always just let that dry and then paint over it. So anytime you're unsure of a color, just try it. Try it on a separate canvas or try it on this canvas and then go from there. Okay, for this step, we're going to start by making a light pink for the tongue. And then after we fill in the bottom part of the tongue with the lightest hitting, we're just going to add a little bit of the, just a tiniest bit of black to that paint so that we can create that shadow underneath the mouth. So, and we can add that into our wet paint as we're painting the tongue. So using this color, I fill in the entire tongue and then while it's still wet, I go in with a little bit darker pink and create that shadow. Just tiny straight line right underneath the mouth.
Oh, I love this part so much because I think Huskies have the most gorgeous eyes. Sometimes they're a sky blue, sometimes they're two different colors, but we are just going to spend this time to really re define the eyes by placing down the first layer of blue. It's the, in this case, it's a light blue using sky blue and titanium white. And then just to make sure those pu pupils are really symmetrical, we're going to go back in with our black and then repaint and then touch up the eyes. So right now I'm just washing up my brush and I'm going to use just straight black and I'm going to make those two pupils as symmetrical as possible and it's alright if you get a little into the blue. Black is really a potent color so it should just go over the blue just fine even if it's wet. If you need to extend the thickness of the eyes and the markings around the Husky's eyes, by all means go, you can do that now. Um, I felt the need to, but if you don't, you can just skip past this step and move on to the next one. If you've been wondering what that little husky is holding in his mouth, it's just a, a treat. And so we're going to be using burnt sienna and raw sienna for this. And we're going to create a light brown and we're just going to paint that white section in. And don't forget about the bottom as you're painting this husky. I am going to paint the bottom for this little little dog treat, but I have to go back later and get in that those other colors too. So by now your palette should look pretty messy. If it looks like mine, then you're doing a great job. But we're gonna do something that's called a dry brush technique. And I'm just taking a dry brush 
and I'm adding the littlest bit of white and I'm going to add those direct highlights to uh, the husky's face. Now during this step I don't want to press real hard and I also want to put a really thin layer of this white over the gray because I'm just creating that contrast. I want there to still be some shadow but then also to see those highlights where the light is hitting on the husky. Now when you find your brush getting really dry and thick, that's when you need to wash it out and then you need to really dry it thoroughly on your towel or, or um, cloth. And then just go right ahead and then add that little thin layer of white and then go for it again. I woke up in the middle of the night mm -hmm, na, na, na. And I wondered how you're always right It gets me I couldn't see what you saw in me mm -hmm. But you showed me how to believe Still gets me When I look back I can see It is hard to share my thoughts Ooh, na, na, na. It's like cutting a wound in a bleeding heart It gets me But I know that you need it all Ooh, Just give me some time cause I need to know That you're staying mm. When I look back I can see you're hiding Alright 
guys, we are rolling on through. We don't have very much more to go. We are just going to start making the details on the nose. And so we're going to make a, a, a medium gray and then we're going to make a light gray to put uh, as the highlights on the top of the nose. We also need to use that color to create the nostrils, the outline that um, helps us to see the nostrils. Otherwise, it's just going to be this big black blob. So try to make that as symmetrical as you can and use your detail brush. Okay, so using the, gr the gray that we just made, I'm just adding white to that and I'm going to add that highlight on the top of the nose. I even use a little bit of that to go in with those nostril highlights as well. And also you'll notice that I might not use straight white. I'll, I'll, I don't like to waste paint, so I'll often use like really light grays or anything left over on my palette. When using acrylics, I always love to layer, but I often find myself at the very end making just at random getting different colors. So right now I'm going to go back in with my medium gray tones and just really create that contrast again on the face. So we added the highlights. We do have our light grays and our medium tones, but just to make that even more natural looking, we're going to um, create that right now with our medium gray. I'm creating a color that's lighter than the outline we put around the dog's eye and then darker than the highlights that we previously put on the face. So it's it's something that we're going to you're going to have to play with, but those in between those two colors so that we can create that layering effect. So this particular husky that I'm looking at, the reference photo, shows that it has some gray markings on the dog. So if you have that, make sure you include that. But if not, you can just bypass this step. Okay, so right now we're going to define that dog hair by using the edge of our medium brush and we're just going to go in with the sections that are a bit more 2D and we're going to make it a bit more three-dimensional by just adding lines, just little hairs on the side of the face, um, wherever you, you uh, think the dog needs some more hair.
it's really important to get the eyes right because that's just the focal point of most paintings. And how I do that is I add the darker tone of the eye color where the eyebrow is and the shadows are, are catching the eye. But then where the light is catching, I'm going to add a really light tone of the eye color. So watch me as I do that. And the variant in colors that I'm using right here is sky blue and titanium white. Okay, and for the last and final details, we will be adding plain white to create that little reflection on the eyes, and then our whiskers, which is also using plain white, and then we're done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you and just all the beautiful, sweet, kind comments you're leaving me. If you haven't already subscribed for regular weekly animal painting tutorials for stress relief, make sure you subscribe below. And if this was helpful to you, make sure you click the like button. All right, guys. Thanks again. Bye. Yeah, Zeus. <laughs>